Hello all and welcome to Newcastle upon Tyne Unitarians. I'm going to light a chalice. On the 14th of March 2021, Margaret Robinson of Stockton Unitarians led our Mothering Sunday service. Please enjoy this excerpt from the gathering, which includes a prayer entitled For All Who Mother by Unitarian Universalist Minister Victoria Weinstein, our own thoughts, memories and photographs of our mothers, grandmothers and people who have mothered us. And finally, a reading entitled My Many Mothers by another Unitarian Universalist Minister, Vanessa Rush Southern. Happy Mother's Day. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this Mother in Sunday service from Newcastle Unitarian Church and Margaret Robinson from the Stockton Congregation. I'm going to light the chalice now. We light this chalice for mothers and mothering to celebrate those who have taken on the task of nurturing a young one, a baby, a child or youth into adulthood. To celebrate those who have nourished the light of truth and compassion in growing minds and hearts. To celebrate those who have committed time, money, energy to the growth of in this world. Poem for Mother's Day by an anonymous child. Sometimes you get discouraged because I am so small and always leave dirty marks on furniture. But every day I'm growing, I'll be grown up some day, and all those little dirty marks will all have gone away. As I grow, I'll change a lot. The years will fly by. You'll wonder how I grew so quick, when and where and why. I may be still very small, but this I'd like to say, I love you very, very big. Happy Mother's Day. Now we reflect in Thanksgiving this day for all those whose lives have nurtured ours, the life-giving ones who heal with their presence who listen in sympathy, who give wise advice, but only when asked for it. We are grateful for all those who have mothered us, who have held us gently in times of sorrow, who celebrated with the triumphs, no matter how small, who noticed when we changed and grew, who praised us for taking risks, who took genuine pride in our success and who expressed genuine compassion when we did not succeed. On this day that honours mothers, let us honour all mothers, men and women alike, who from some way have freely and wholeheartedly given life and sustenance and vision to us. Amen. Now we're going to sing our second hymn. Mother's Day this year falls today, Sunday the 14th of March in the UK, with the date set by the celebrations Christian Foundations as Mother in Sunday. It always takes place on the fourth Sunday in the Festival of Lent, exactly three weeks before Easter Sunday. In the 16th century, Mothering Sunday was less mothers and more about the church. Back then, people would make a journey to their mother church once a year. This might have been their home church, their nearest cathedral, or a major parish church in a bigger town. 
the service which took place symbolized the coming together of families. This would have represented a significant journey for many people. Another tradition was to allow those working in the fields on wealthy farms and estates in England to have the day off on the fourth Sunday of Lent to visit their mothers and possibly go to church too. This was a variation on the theme of visiting the mother church and was a move towards a more fast occasion. Before the days of cars and roads, people get-togethers were far more race, rare, sorry, and FaceTime and Zoom were still a long, long way away. In some ways, this tradition is still alive today as grown-up children often visit their parents on Mothering Sunday. However, the journey home invariably became an occasion for free night with the custom developing for children to pick flowers en route to give as a gift to their mothers. And the date took on a further celebrating, celebratory air because it was traditionally an occasion for the fasting rules of Lent to be relaxed, allowing revellers a long-awaited feast. Consequently, it also became known as Refreshment Sunday, Simnel Sunday, after the Simnel came baked in celebration, and most Evocatively, on of all, and possibly only in Surrey, pudding pie Sunday. So initially, the mothering aspect of the occasion had no connection in the way of mothers are celebrated today. But how did Mothering Sunday become Mother's Day? Today, most people know the occasion as Mother's Day rather than the traditional Mothering Sunday. This owes much to the American festival on Mother's Day, which is held later in the year and has no annotations. It was created in 1907 by Anna Jarvis, who held a memorial for her mother, Anne Jarvis, a peace activist who treated wounded soldiers in the American Civil War. Her daughter campaigned for a day to honour the role played by mothers following Anne's death, and the idea gained such traction that by 1911, all US states observed the holiday. In 1914, it had become so ubiquitous that the United States of America President Woodrow Wilson made Mother's Day a national holiday as a public expression of love and reverence for the mothers of our country. Mother's Day rapidly became a major commercial opportunity with Hallmark greeting cards leading the way in manufacturing cards in the early 1920s. Jarvis deeply resented the materialistic side of the holiday that she had created. <clears throat> she was even arrested for protesting against organised selling Mother's Day merchandise. Mother's Day now is observed around the world, with the majority of countries taking their lead from the US practice of celebrating it on the second Sunday of May. Being a mother is one of the most rewarding and demanding jobs you can ever be called upon to perform. At times it may feel as if you are being pulled in a hundred different directions at once, and if there are simply too few hours in the day to accomplish all the chores, motherhood is a job like no other, and the reward of watching your children grow towards independence and confidence are immense. And yet it is all too easy in the rush and bustle of the working day to concentrate on meeting those different demands of childcare work and home without ever stopping to catch your breath and consider the real value of the doing. 
it is often the role it is the role of a mother to prepare her children from the very start for life without her our faith communities offer one of the last places in our culture for intergenerational contact as families grow up and drift apart let us seize these opportunities grandparents and grandchildren extended families and all families to come together in new ways and now i invite you to give your contributions if you wish or your photographs and tell us about your mothers or people who have mothered you or people you have mothered so it's up to you now if you'd like to share, just wave your hand at me uh, and uh, I'll, I'll make sure we go in turns. Would anyone like to start? Jean, would you like to unmute yourself and go ahead? Good morning, everybody. I have two photographs, but I, they are very small, so I'm going to try and hold them up to the screen in case you can see them. Um, OK. OK. That's my parents. In probably the 1930s um, and on the back of the photograph it was a walking photograph you know that was taken on the seasides it says happy snaps alum chine Bournemouth um, which they used to go to a lot they used to go down to the south coast from Cheshire so that was my um, I'm the youngest of, of three and I'm the mother of two myself so my other picture is I um, hope I can use and see this. I'm sorry if it reflects a lot. Um, wait a minute. There we go. That's taken on Michael's 21st birthday, and Louise would have been 27, 28. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I've had a wonderful mother, a wonderful grandma, in fact, only one grandmother, my mother's mother, my mother. And I've been a mother and um, my son is now a father. So um, I think I'm truly blessed. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you. Anybody else? Louise, do you want to go ahead? Not to make this all about the Reeve family. Uh, but since my actual mother is here, I do have a picture of our, the rest of our family, which let's see if I can get that. Hopefully that's clear without too much of a reflection. Um, obviously, you can see my own mum here, uh, who is with us, but you can also see the other Reeve mum. Uh, that's uh, the lady in the corner is my sister-in-law, Becky, uh, and her other, because mum has modestly uh, not mentioned, well, mum has mentioned that she is in fact a mum and a grandma. Uh, so... We have um, two Reeve mums there and also a couple of Reeve dads uh, because it, it, mothering is a tough gig and it's good to have a bit of support from dad uh, and all the, all the people who support mothers. Thank you very much, Louise. Lovely. Anybody else? Stephen, do you want to unmute? Go ahead. Yes. Um... I also have a slightly old photo, not as old as um, Jean's uh, first one. But of course, photos nowadays mainly tend to be digital, don't they? So um, so this is probably about 20 years old. Um, my, my mother's still alive. She's um, she's 96. So obviously, she's she's getting quite old now. Um, and so like like David's mother, she's actually in hospital at the moment because she's had um so that's um um in a sense that's quite difficult because we won't be able to you know we won't be able to see her because of the uh the, the restrictions on um for mother's day um uh, understandable but but still you know difficult and and i think you know finally having been very healthy and uh active you know really really right into her 90s um she's now getting a little bit more frail and and my brother and I having to help um her uh, um, uh, her to to a significant extent um but we do it extremely uh, gladly i think um because um 
you know, it, it's um, it's only very recently that the tables have turned, as it were, and it's as supporting her more than uh, more than she has um, supported us. Um, and I really, when I look back, I'm very grateful for that. I, I, and I remember as a Sorry, this is getting a bit rambling. <laughs> I'll double get to the point. Um, I remember as a child, uh, um, quite possibly on Mother's Day, um, pointing out to my mother that um, there's a Mother's Day and there's a Father's Day. So um, why isn't there a Children's Day then? Um, and she said, um, she said, well, uh, all the other days of the year are Children's Days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I think that was that was right. Um, and I, I, you know, in her case, um, and um, I, I particularly remember and I'm grateful for um, when I um, came down from university. I was um, I was really quite ill and not able to to work uh, for a couple of years. Um, and I went, you know, went back home at a um, at an age when you know most. Um, uh, you know, most parents can reasonably expect to their children to be self-supporting, and there was never any, you know, question but that she would, you know, help and support me. So, uh, you know, I am I am grateful for all that that I've had really for the whole of my life. So that's it. Thank you very much for sharing, Stephen. Thank you. Would anyone else like to share? Um, I haven't got a photograph, uh, mainly because my mum is extraordinarily shy. Um, she wouldn't be comfortable with it. Um, but uh, I, I would just like to, to express my thanks to her now for being um, such a supportive woman, um, because she is. Uh, my mum and I are both only children, so we have a tiny family, tiny. Um, but we are extremely close. Um, and I was quite close to her mum as well. Um, and they both formed my life, formed, um, shaped me uh, in so many ways. Um, and my mum really is uh, one of my heroes. I do admire her traits, uh, her character, her personality enormously. And I aspire to be like her in so many ways. And so just, just to say thank you to her, even though she's not here. <laughs> right. I will hand back over to Margaret then, if you would like to carry on. Well, thank you very much for all your contributions and very interesting to find out about each other's families. Uh, I'm mother of four and I have, and I have seven grand, seven grandchildren and one great grandchild. And I also had a wonderful mother and father and uh, I had one grandma who was alive, still alive when I was born. Um, so, uh, an ever increasing family. <laughs> so I feel very mothered and um, very grateful to everyone. So every I have many mothers. There is the mother who gave birth to me and who calls me twice a week to see how I am doing. This mother stands six feet tall with auburn hair. Her rounded hips carried me through the world when my own legs were too short to keep up. Looking at this woman is like seeing my own body telescoped through time. There is no ambiguity about what I will look like in 30 years time. Her body gracefully leads the way. The older I get, the more like her I am. Gestures of her become mine almost without my permission. It is scary and funny at the same time. She and I are connected in ways that I only partly understand. I have another mother. She is the aunt who welcomed me every summer from the time I was eight onward. At first, I came for only a few weeks to her house in the country. However, by high school, I would arrive the day after school ended and leave the day before it started up again. Later, her home was where when my heart was broken and I needed a safe place to mend. She taught me that grant graciousness makes life a little easier and more beautiful. 
and that life simple of pleasures can be sublime. Though I don't have the body of her or her gestures, she was and is no less a mother to me. Another mother is the aunt who took me in for six months when my family was in transition. In this aunt's world, her life was a show and we were living on centre stage. In her company, I learned that each day can be quite grand, with a little extra effort and a dose of wild abandon, in the sense that she had loved me and shaped me. I am not her child too. There were others still. There was the woman who made my ordination stall for me. She embroidered it with a chalice, though she isn't a Unitarian Universalist, and butterflies as a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and sewed a secret pocket in the back of my lipstick and tissues. This woman is an Episcopalian priest. She waited a long time for nomination to recognise her right as a woman to be ordained. She reminds me of many things, not least of which is the privilege of ministry. She too has been a mother to me. At times growing up, I used to wonder how my mother could share her birthing rights so easily, sending me willingly to this woman or that. You can never have too many mothers, my mother used to say. I'm beginning to see the wisdom of her words in the reflective light of the woman to whom she sent me. I was allowed to mould my vision of myself. Indeed, for all of us, it is in the company of such women that we find our sense of who we are as women and who we might become. There can therefore never be too many of such women in our life. Thank you to all our mothers in whatever way they have appeared in our lives and we wish you a happy Mother's Day 2021.